Hello squad and welcome back. Today I am participating in a video by Corinna over at Tarnished Treasures. We are going to be sharing some of our favorite fall things for the senses. So I'm just going to take you along through my day, my week, however long it takes for me to get these favorites out and just show you what we have. So I just got back from Aldi and my mom and I have had this arrangement sort of for the past few weeks that um, she keeps my kids for an hour and a half, two hours, and I go to the store, I get a list for me, I get a list for her, and it sort of helps us both out so that I can go to the store for her and so that I'm not having to have the kids with me when I'm in the grocery store. So one of the things that I have been loving that has sort of just been like a little like vacation for me during the week. Like I get time by myself. And on the ride there, it takes about like 25 minutes to get there. Uh, I've been listening to podcasts. So that is one of the hearing things that I have really been enjoying recently. Um, I've been listening to The Lazy Genius by Kendra Adachi. I've been listening to The Next Right Thing by Emily P. Freeman. Um, sometimes I listen to um, Ask uh, Pastor John with uh, John Piper. Uh, so yeah, if you have any more uh, podcast recommendations, I would love to kind of increase my list. Um, but I've especially been listening to The Lazy Genius, just sort of thinking about how I want to approach fall um, with meals, with uh, organizing. Really, her whole premise is just like what's important to you, what matters to you. So I listened to one today and it was talking about fall reading and how to make fall reading work for you. And reading is something that I'd like to get better at doing anyway. So, um, so yeah. Also talking about sense of touch and things that we like the feeling of this cardigan, I have really been enjoying and it's thrifted. The tag is cut out, so I don't know where it's from. But it is super, super soft. And anytime when I go grocery shopping, if I'm wearing like short sleeves like I am today, I like to have a cardigan because uh, I get cold walking past the refrigerated and freezer section. So I like to be comfortable while I'm shopping. Good morning, squad. I have my little special helper here with me today. And um, as far as taste for the fall, um, I have really been loving these overnight oats. There's nothing fall about them, uh, but I am going to be trying a pumpkin spice flavor of these. Mm -hmm. And actually, that's going to be going up on my channel October 2nd, tomorrow. So, um, I'm trying out some pumpkin recipes through the fall, but this one's not pumpkin, but I wanted to share it with you. So, it's overnight oats, and so they start out in a jar like this, and it just starts out with oats, almond milk, chia seeds and uh, sweetener. I use honey. You can use maple syrup. I'll put the recipe in the description box down below. But then in the morning, you can just empty it out in a bowl or keep it in the jar. And I like to add a heaping tablespoon of peanut butter. Oh, Andy. Oh, Andy. Thanks, You're welcome. Mama, Dad put the chocolate chips in your so you can leave it in the um, you can leave it in the mason jar or you can put it in a bowl and then I like to add a heaping tablespoon of peanut butter this one's kind of my favorite it's from Walmart uh, and then you can just add whatever toppings you want I usually add some chocolate chips and then frozen blueberries are great bananas are great so this is pretty much how I make it every time but I want to explore some other flavors too so here's the finished product is sort of a cross between pudding and oatmeal. Um, if you think the cold texture will bother you, you could probably put it in the microwave or put it in a pan on the stove, uh, but it really tastes great to me, just like this. Another thing for the fall that I'm really looking forward to as far as my senses is diving into this cookbook. My husband got me this a couple years ago and I've only used it a few times, but I mean, it's just full of soup recipes and it goes through uh, by types. It's got all different kinds of recipes in it, pretty much everything you can think of. So uh, with our meal plan this fall, I'm planning on doing like a dedicated night of the week to soup because I love soup and it's inexpensive and easy. So I'm really looking forward to diving into this. And this is by Reader's Digest. 
So a few other things that I have been loving as far as the senses. Um, I guess you could put this under sight. Uh, I have been reading through Michael and Smith's book. I think this was the first one that she wrote. She's written several books about like home decor and um, really this one is called The Nesting Place and uh, I just checked it out from my local library and it says it doesn't have to be perfect to be beautiful. And this whole book is just about making the most of your space and I appreciate it especially because there is a lot in here targeted towards renters which we currently are in that boat and sort of feeling like maybe you shouldn't do this or couldn't do this because this isn't technically your house. It's a great book for everybody I think but she speaks especially to renters and she talks about um, decision fatigue and uh, basically just like not doing something because you're afraid to put a nail hole in the wall or you might have to do a different shade of paint or you know it's just so many of us and I fall into this category it's like we don't really make the space our own because we don't feel like it's our own and then because we didn't make the space our own we don't feel like it's our own if that makes sense it's just like this vicious circle like we don't make it our own because we don't feel like it's our own so we don't feel like it's our own so we don't make it our own and it's just like this vicious cycle so I am really really enjoying this book another thing that I'm enjoying as far as hearing are a few songs that I found on Amazon. Amazon Music is traditionally what I listen to just because right now I'm not subscribed to anything so I don't pay for Amazon, I don't pay for Spotify right now. That could change in the future. But a few songs that I have been listening to lately, I really like Just You by Amy Stroop. I really like What Is There by Delta Spirit. I've been enjoying some of the new Taylor Swift songs on her Folklore album. Uh, I also like the song So Cool by Camp. I've also really been enjoying, I haven't noticed it until this week, but Spotify will show me and it'll, it'll say my soundtrack and it makes a station based off of what I listen to. And actually for the most part, it's pretty spot on. Uh, it's had, um, it's had a lot of music that I would pick anyway, but not the exact songs. It's just had sort of my same vibe and so I've really liked that feature on Amazon Music. That has been really nice. So as far as sense of smell, so I used to wear perfume but I really don't much anymore. I do have this rollerball though that a friend made me and so I'll share the recipe with you in case you are someone who does essential oils. I need to buy Joy. I don't have Joy uh, essential oil but I have all of these other ones and I'm starting to get low and need to refill this again. But I really like the way that this smells. The rollerball is called Happy Times and I really just think that these oils combine together. It's just an uplifting scent. Yeah, I'm bad at describing scents, but it smells good. Another scent that I I really enjoy this all the time. It's just whenever I'm cooking to smell the ingredients that I'm using. I do this sort of unintentionally and I didn't really realize the impact that it made, but my son likes to cook with me a lot. And now, you know, if we open cinnamon, if we open vanilla, he'll say, mommy, smell. And it's sort of neat that I unintentionally pass down to him this appreciation for like stopping and smelling the roses, like stopping and smelling your ingredients and just making cooking like a sensory experience. So that's a pretty cool one. Another thing that is sensory that I have been loving as far as touch, I know I mentioned my cardigan and I really enjoy wearing that. I've also really been enjoying like super soft long sleeve shirts. I like a good thin but not too thin uh, long sleeve shirt. I like a shirt that is soft enough and thin enough but not too thin to where you don't have to wear a cami underneath it. I like to wear just the shirt and wearing like a thin long sleeve shirt with yoga pants to a yard sale has just been so nice. It's been like the perfect little layering piece. If it was a really chilly morning, I could put a light jacket with it and then shed the jacket as the day went on. So my favorite one is probably this sort of burgundy burnt orange hybrid stripe and this was a thrift find a couple of years ago and like I said super soft it fits great this is my kind of shirt 
I wasn't sure what sense to put this under, so we're just going to say that we're putting it under sight, but it could apply to multiple areas. But what I wanted to say is that I've been to more yard sales in September than I have any other month of the whole year, which I feel like is a little bit uncharacteristic of September. Um, but I think, you know, just the way everything's gone in 2020, it's just been a little bit different. But I went to yard sales Saturday with my sister and I wanted to just do like a mini yard sale haul and show you what I got. So the total that I spent was $7.75 and we were actually able to find several community yard sales. Community yard sales that actually felt like community yard sales instead of like a community yard sale with two participating homes. So I'm just going to go in order of the homes that we stopped at. So the first one, I only got one little group of items. I'm sort of toying around with the idea of having a, a themed small Christmas tree for my kids and making it like old toy themed. So I found these ornaments. There are nutcrackers and there are little trains. I got six nutcrackers and three trains and I got the whole set for $1.75. So I think that these could be really sweet on a tree and if I don't end up using them, I can redonate them or pass them along. And even too, I thought with the trains, if I ended up wanting to do a different coloring than this, I could easily just repaint them. They're just little wooden trains. All right, so that was all at the first sale. Then the next sale that we went to was a community yard sale. And I actually think that's where all the rest of my purchases came from was just from this one community sale. So Andy just had a birthday and I was a little unsure of what to get her. I feel like with the second child, you don't really need as many items, but you still want to get them a little something for their special day. So I saw this little pig and I just thought that she was so cute. She was priced at a quarter and I thought that she sort of looked familiar, but I wasn't really sure. So then I noticed here that if you open up her tummy, that it is actually a fabric version of if you give a pig a party. You know, it's that whole series of if you give a moose a muffin, if you give a mouse a cookie. And I hesitated, but I thought it's just a quarter. And when she opened it, we had her birthday party this past weekend. And when she opened it, the first thing she did was hug it. So I think it was a good purchase. Like I said, it was a quarter. As soon as we brought it home, I just threw it in the wash and it washed up beautifully. So that was a quarter. So the next two items I also got at that same sale. I can't remember. One of them was a quarter and one of them was a dollar. And I can't remember. But anyway, the three items together added up to a dollar fifty. So the next thing I got was another thing for her birthday. And it was just this little Fisher Price uh, little play toy. So it turns on. And this one is a button. One, two, three. And then each of these come out and you can push them back in and it'll say different things and make noises and I thought with the age that she is this would be a good thing uh, sort of like a bridge to uh, doing puzzles and wooden puzzles and this might be a little more interesting and rewarding because it makes noises when you put the pieces in their spots so like I said, that was either a quarter or a dollar. And then the other item that I got was this wipes container. I have one, but mine will not close all the way. And this one actually is just much better quality. It is the Skip Hop brand. And it opens here nicely so that you can put wipes in. But unlike mine, mine just hinges there. This also has where it opens on the top, which I think will be nice to have in the diaper bag. And if you're a mom, you know that even if your kids aren't in diapers, you still carry wipes with you for, I don't know, forever. The next item is in my bathroom. It's nothing too spectacular, but we needed a new shower curtain. I really wanted something that was a little more contrast to the walls. This sort of just blends in. It does at least have some texture. Um, I'm still going to be looking for one, but in the meantime, this will serve the purpose, and it was $2. And then the last two things I got were kitchen items. I came across this mini bunt pan and they gave it to me for a dollar and fifty cents. So it is the Nordicware brand. It looks like it's in pretty decent shape. And one thing this made me think about was people ask, 
you know, when you thrift, when you yard sale, do you find that things just accumulate in your homes? Do you find that you're buying things just because they're a good deal? And the answer is no. And one of the things that I thought about was I had this at home already. I had found this at a yard sale several years ago and had thought it would be good to make little mini cakes to give to people for gifts, especially at Christmas time. But they're just too small. So whenever I saw this, my thought was I will replace this one. So I bought this one for $1.50 and I'm going to redonate this one. So I feel like that's what I do a lot of times with yard sales and I know that a lot of people out there are the same way. I know that Corinna does that a lot and I've watched her bring something into her home and say, you know, I like this one better or this one suits my space better or this fits me better and then you cycle out whatever it was that was holding that place before. So yeah, that is kind of how I approach yard selling. You know, I know myself, I know kind of what I'm looking for and what I need. And when I see something that I really, really like, if I've already got something like it, then I can just cycle that one out. The next thing I was just so excited to find, uh, I've never seen these at a yard sale before. I love copper. And I found this set of copper measuring cups. It's a set of four and they really are just in great condition. I washed them up as soon as I got home and I've already been using them, but I love the, the shape of them, the gold handle. I think that they are really well made. It doesn't have a brand name, but I got this entire set for a dollar and that wasn't even bargaining or haggling. That was just, they offered me a dollar. So 